Hi, and welcome to episode 5 of my tutorial series for Going Medieval. I'm Icon, and today we're going to dive into the topic of defenses. I wanted to set up workshops and such things in today's episode first, but then I realized that we got so much work to do with the whole defense topic that I want to start with that. Additionally, it's a pretty healthy thing to do if you want to stay safe. And the first thing we're going to wait for today is the necessary research to bring up the stonemason's bench. You could, of course, produce your defenses out of wood, no problem. I actually think if you want to bring up a quick defense, going for wood is actually smarter. But I want to work with a different material here also to showcase you a little bit that there are differences between materials and so on and so forth. So while our good mate here is doing the research, as you can see here, we're finally in a constant production loop. Linet is constantly researching. His work speed is still pretty crappy, but he'll be getting there, believe me. So now we got to think about our placement of defenses. And that's really by far the most complicated part of building a defense, defensive structure. So my personal approach here will be that we're going to use this ravine here for our safety. So that means walls will run around our base. I guess I will, I will make walls around, let's see, there's a couple, there, there's really a lot of, uh, things that get us uh, up there. So I guess the wall will run somewhere around here. And well, it's not that easy because we got the kitchen out there in the, in that little hole. <laughs> yeah. So I personally tend to build pretty big fortifications, but it's really up to you. What we're also going to need is the stone. So we're going to start mining the limestone here before we actually need it. But back to the actual topic. So I will remove a couple of the access points here by mining because I don't like the fact that attackers would have such an easy time reaching my mountain. I want this down here to be the only access point to our to our little island here because this way I can control the movement of our of the enemy way easier. So the first wall will run around here then and everything which will come from the southern side will have no other choice than running over here. So we'll need to cover up our other flanks next because that's the beautiful thing. Enemies that attack you will never ever use these ups, uh, will create any upstairs to reach your base. So basically, you can use these things as a pretty decent defense mechanism where you don't need to build too much stuff to get things done, you know. All right, only a couple of research points are left, and then we can finally start building. So I'm going to fast forward until that's done. So here we go. I got the necessary technology now, and we have now access to the stonemason's bench. This is by far a complete overkill for what I am planning to do, but this is more for the sake of the demonstration of resource refining as well. So we're placing that down, and as we can see already, there's, again, not enough wood, but that's a constant statement of the game. So we're going to chop away all these trees here, which is going to be quite beneficial as well, because they're blocking my sight. Also, the staircases here have been destroyed, and, oh yeah, we got a, we got a heat wave now. So... In every season that has extreme temperatures, summer and winter, there can be extreme temperature events. And here it's uh, going to be interesting to, uh, to see the difference between outside temperature, you see my cursor here, 33 degree, and inside temperatures, 18 degree. So the 
buildings have an, a lower temperature inside than outside. And also interesting to note is that the clay building here has a much lower temperature compared to the wooden buildings. When stuff like that happens, it's really just important to check out that your characters have a temperature tolerance, as you can see here, 26 degree, that roughly matches the inside of their rooms. If it doesn't match the insides of their rooms, it is a, you really need to do something about uh, temperature lowerage and such. Okay. Now, let's see. We got... Yeah, settlers are suffering from excessive heat. But they will also seek shelter, and they don't immediately die from being too hot. See here, so hotness does reduce motor functions and slows your attacks, but beyond that, you don't immediately die from it. All right, so let's get back to the actual topic. So with the limestone I have dug out, I can actually build already walls from the get-go. So we don't really need to build that stonemason's bench. What the stonemason's bench will do for us, though, is something different. We can upgrade our limestones into an even even better material. So the gist of it there is that limes, that these uh, upgrade technologies, stone block cutting, clay brick making, they're mainly thought to enhance your given materials already. So like you can build with clay as it is already, or you can enhance it into clay uh, uh, bricks. For the sake of simplicity, we're now not going to build our fortifications with cut stone blocks but instead we're going to use the regular limestone. So we're going to put up our walls here like that. As you can see, I can't draw further than that, because there's just a maximum length that you can put on your cursor at once. And now we're just going to put, draw that all the way over here. So I'm going to stay with this fortification very simple, because we're just going to draw the wall all the way up here to the mountain. It's a little bit uh, hard, really hard to discern, but here it goes. So we put up a completely massive wall here, but we do want to be able to leave our castle, so we got to bring up a door. So we're bringing up the door here. And obviously we need extra wood. So the heat wave is not really a great concern. What the heat wave really does punish is if you don't have proper housings, housing and such things. But you get the idea. So what will happen now that is that this flank is really well protected from outside forces. Enemies can only attack us from this angle via this staircase and then they will be facing us here but there is a problem with this whole strategy we won't be able to fight back that easily so we're going to do something about that we're going to deconstruct this whole structure here so we're going to put the where is it deconstruction command on that Ooh, just like that and instead i'm going to put a second layer of wall right behind that one And then we're going to put a staircase in front of that. Let's, let's do a limestone stair, you know. With a, bit, with a fitting optic there. And limestone floor on top of that. It's not really visible right now. But this does mainly do something for the visuals. Alright. So this is one of my favorite easy uh, early here he's overheated one of my favorite early game defenses just let me check that this dude here is not going to die here so he overheated him to himself too hard he's going to be treated by a doctor because i got a tending priority of one here probably should put the tending priority here higher too and she's going to recover in here or he's going to recover in here Heat waves are 
something where you need to pay attention to events like that when somebody is breaking down rescue them put them into a uh, cold environment and everything will be fine it's just a little bit annoying to bear with it and also it's a little bit sad that we're losing workforce here but i can't change that so this is my basic approach later down the road we're also going to be able to put up merlons here so you can uh, get some cover but we we will wait until this has been built you know so here we got another flank that's uh, completely unprotected here so let's continue with that i'm not gonna put up the same efficiency on on fortifications everywhere so for example i'm sec, this is bad i'm not gonna build the uh fortifications like I did down there and it all ends with a staircase and all these things just at the points where I think that we will definitely have to fight so just realized that we can easily seal ourselves here off to without too much of an effort as long as there is no staircase nobody will be able to enter this area here and as I can see there is no staircase so this is completely safe now, the rest is up to me. We will enter our kitchen area from there, so I don't need to put up walls too close to that pit. But we're going to wall ourselves off right here, I'd say. Hold on now. A little bit more north. And here we go. So, of course, this is a pretty megalomaniacal uh, defense array, I know that. But I personally like to plan big, and I personally like to have large defenses like that. It's up to you, of course. This can be all compactified by proper planning and analysis of your terrain. This is just my personal style. I like to have room for expansion, and therefore I do like to have large fortifications, as you can already think. But, of course, the downside of my strategy here is a immense hunger of... or a immense hunger in terms of resources. But, as you might have noticed here, I am sitting on an entire patch of limestone, so I can create a own my own little quarry here inside the castle vault. So this ain't going to be that horrible. All right, now we can see that our wall is finally being built. Here is the stone table, stone mason's bench. So limestone brick is being directly converted limestone into limestone brick. We're going to make this until we have a couple of those. So I'm holding down the left control button. To allocate that so here we go Ooh, so this is uh, where you need to be careful so Herobreed is already in safety but Manilda must be rescued now immediately if you don't do these things such uh, events can spiral into doom so I really hope that We're going to be done with that heat wave soon. But yeah, the inside temperatures are okay, so there's no particular risk here for anybody else. Okay, so of course this will take a couple of days, but also a neat thing here has happened. We have not only unlocked us some limestone here with this quarry, we also gained access to gold. So down here, you see this uh, neat glimmer, this is gold. My experience was whenever I started out, started mining out limestone deposits in a larger scale, I also discovered gold and iron. So if you're looking for these materials in, in particular, quarries are your best friend. I'm just also realizing that I want to have a door here, because in the future, this place here, might be the source of limestone for this uh, settlement here once we're done with this little deposit because it ain't really that huge all right we're going to bring 
clay from this area here. Well, maybe we're going to mine here as well. Who will, who will know? But yeah, so far so good. There's also a different material here, salt. If you check it out, this is salt. This is clay. You can you can spot the difference in in the shimmer. Clay doesn't have this shimmer. Salt does. I think uh, I feel like salt and clay are pretty hard to discern from one another. Sadly, I don't like that too much. All right. So research is again available. We got twenty five books. So to avoid problems like we had during the heat wave, we're now going to unlock tailoring, and looks like yeah, well, we're going to build the the tailor's workbench. Do I want to build that right now? Actually, I don't. We've got too many jobs. So here we are at the spot that this is a pretty big project and it's not going to be that easily done in a short period of time. I personally always focus a defense project before I do other things, if possible. But that's uh, just me where I want to be prepared for attacks in any way. Because I really don't like to be surprised from early enemies. And as a matter of fact, these uh, defenses here will be really, really mighty in the long run. Because there's one major deficiency of the AI behavior of your enemies. When we got this all built up, what will happen is that the enemies will always clump up at the wooden doors and start smashing them to gain access to our base. The fun thing here is we can all put our archers on the parapet there and uh, fire away. So in the earlier versions of the game, the enemies came quite often with melee exclusive uh, parties. That's a thing of the past. So we're being attacked this time by bandits and an archer. So, ah, look at that. Finally, we're, we're really being attacked. So you remember we're shift, we're holding down left shift, and now we're drafting them with T. So we're going to use this uh, little thing that I built up here. And Tifina doesn't have any weapon whatsoever. So that's bad, but I don't, uh, I, but I can't help it. Tefina will be able to help us nevertheless. So these dudes are luckily not attacking us directly. This is uh, really, really lucky for us, but now they are. So I'm putting a Baldwin up, uh, up front here. And line it, it's going to stand here. Our enemy is only approaching with one archer, so we're we're in the uh let's see, yeah. We got the upper hand here towards our enemies. So our archers are already firing away, as you can see. Boom. And the higher ground is insanely strong here, so our enemy is going to be suffering tremendously from that. The enemy archer, I'm going to uh, let Lionet get in there, or at least I tried to. Let's send in Baldwin. Lionet is uh, suffering attacks. The other raiders are attacking now our base, so... They were completely bluntly ignoring our forces, but we already took down two of our enemies. As you can see here, one of our people here is already limping. So, it's a little bit sad. Here, here goes the enemy. We're going to uh, put up our our melee fighters here like that. So Baldwin and Lynette will block the path here. And you can see here already that our archers are doing way less damage than before. So Tefina, by the way, can get over here and just, let's see, does she have marksmanship that high? No, she doesn't. She can just uh, pick up a weapon from the fallen enemies. And uh, yeah, my archers have a really horrible malfunction here. So they were uh, swarming towards our enemies for whatever reason that is. Alright, yeah, that's uh, 
sometimes a little, it's a little bit iffy to select somebody correctly, and uh, yeah, you get the idea. So Kuthbald is trying to attack our ranged people, so I'm going to send them away, and Tefina is going to get there and try to keep melee people away from your from your archers because they become completely incapacitated if they get rushed in by fighters. Here we go. But as you can already notice, we're gaining the upper hand. And this is a wonderful example of where our defenses will bring us in the long run. Because right now we, we had to uh, run, run around and we took some damage here. Baldwin and Lionet are pretty roughed up. And uh, I thought they were running away. Yeah, now Roderick is uh, running away. Okay. And yeah, so this was not ideal, but it was also not really bad. Nah, our people are somehow 50 50 not uh, willing to. Now, nah, whatever, we're going to take that poor dude down here. Die. Okay, I'm drafting these with T. And now we got a lot of enemy corpses lying around. This is pretty annoying, and this is also something that I love to utilize, <laughs> in a way. So, in the miscellaneous tab, there are pyres. So we're now going to build up two pyres here, two pyres there. Uh, maybe not there, in a sec. Let's put the pyres uh, closer to our gate, because here is uh, something you can cheese around. Your your enemies will attack those pyres while being pelted with arrows. It's uh, It might be not too fair, but I don't care. So here's another thing. Convalescence should be always top-notch priority for everybody. So let's uh, select everybody. Draft with T. Or whatever. He was drafting, wasn't it? Yeah. Draft and undraft them. That was the uh, main idea. Because uh, then their uh, old commands get overwritten. So before they were... When you change something here and you want that change to be applied, you can draft and undraft people to do so. Because the drafting and undrafting will make it happen that your, your settler is looking for a new target new thing to do. All right, wonderful. Thanks guys for attacking me. You did a great job in supporting my tutorial. Top notch. Now, we're going to annoy one of our constructors here. So Tifina, how about you? Let's construct that pyre because I really want to get rid of the corpses as quick as possible. There we go. So there's uh, there are two wonderful things about pyres. For one, here's the job: burn body forever. Wonderful. You can get rid of uh, bodies via that. And the next cool thing is they don't get used up. You can keep them. They need fuel though, but they not only remove enemy attackers from your premises. They, like I mentioned already, also work as a uh, as a aggro magnet for your enemies. I like that a lot. Also, corpse disposal. Your people don't like to see corpses. In case you're really messed up or you want to have uh, people that that eat that stuff, you can also edit a production tab. Let's get into that raw meat to show you what I mean. So here you can choose what resources are allowed for this product. So you can also Man manually configure that these dudes here are supposed to be food. You should not, but you can. Now you know how. Don't tell anybody that I told you. So, our people now are spending their time and effort to build these fortifications, and for some reason the door I ordered didn't, uh, didn't make it through. Well, in the long run, fortifications, of course, are pretty big projects because, you know, 
there's a lot of resource uh, necessary, a lot of time, your constructors are bound for a pretty long amount of time, and so on and so forth. Oh, I did build two doors now, so yeah, whatever. But um, as the last attack already depicted, this will help you to avoid getting damaged at all if you if you get really lucky or in the least it will reduce the amount of damage your people take so i'm now going to put in a staircase here as well ah well not wooden so you know wood in a way is one of the harder to acquire resources in this game and oh uh, yeah i i just can't uh here, this is where I wanted to have. I don't want the staircase to border right next to a uh, limestone deposit. Okay, so here's another thing that you will notice the longer you do, do these things. Your people will grow a lot better at doing what they're doing. And when, th when this happens, they will be a lot faster about what they're doing. This is a good process and will enable you to build ever bigger and ever crazier things with the with the given workforce and this is really just uh just just for starters you can upgrade that just to your own liking we could of course make it more massive and put in a, another story of defenses there the only limit is your fantasy and your materials so here we go there's another trader coming to town useful i'm really happy that these traders got introduced into the game with the last version similar wounds need tending because they really make a lot of difference here so we could buy from these dudes Thing I really would want to. It's really interesting that they are also selling Chronicles, so we could amp ourselves up there. Or, oh wait a sec, there's a, uh... no, it's the other way around. He's only selling these things. All right. I can sell Chronicles here. <laughs> That's how it works. So I want these uh, items here, so we're going to do the good old trade. Take some sticks. I find that quite funny that we're capable of paying that well with sticks. Yeah. Let's buy us some herbs here. Alright. But overall, of course... The rest is up to you. You can build a wooden fort, you can build a clay stone fort, or a cut stone fort. This game already offers a quite nice and wealthy amount of options to build your own fortifications, so I'm really pleased with that. So far, we're almost not building more than one, uh, than, than one story. We only have one two-story building so far. But uh, the, the basic idea is quite simple. You already noticed how things work. You can stack these walls on top of another, and as long as they are standing uh, good on top of a, uh, another, they have can just go crazy. There are, of course, limits with stability, so you... Yeah over exceed stability just like we had to respect when we did that cellar here which is still rocking but overall i think once you get a handle on the construction menus here this game is actually surprisingly easy to man to handle in terms of uh, complexity one thing that really crossed my mind quite often with going medieval is that things looked a lot harder than they actually were from when I when I started uh, using them. The most finicky part is always that you have to check out the perspectives and when you're building larger defenses just take their time to zoom in and use the mouse wheel to to really make sure that everything looks the way it should. 
This is one thing where I messed up myself in the past quite often. But beyond that, we're already at a pretty good spot. So are we out of clay or why is nobody constructing that? Oh yeah, here, oh, they didn't, they, they, they didn't fix that. So <laughs> here's that fuck that still exists. So you can build a staircase if there's a piece of material here, sadly. You have to put the staircase on a clean tile. I got no clue why this uh, still hangs around, but it seems to be a pretty a bit of a more problematic thing. So, yeah, this is how you can counteract it. Really took me a while to understand this when I noted when it came across me when, when I crossed uh, that thing the first time. All right. Also, you can use your stone, uh, your quarries here in the long run, of course, also for for building purposes, you know. That hole we're digging here can be the another house in the future, you know. There are, there are options. If this does bother you, you can also just drop floorings on top of that. So you can just uh, here... Eh. A little bit hard to uh, get the start or always so yeah here goes i could now put uh, put some flooring over there if you ever want to put flooring on something and it really doesn't behave use your friend the wooden beam it's a wonderful uh it's a wonderful uh, tool to force the game to allow your floorings when you do stuff like that you can all of a sudden use floors these are little finicky things about the user interface which i hope will get fixed in the future of going medieval because they aren't really that super horrible or anything but it's also bothering a lot when you want to just enjoy the game and do your thing in my opinion at least so now we're going to see that the research is getting done again, so Linet is going to be allowed to return to his uh, research bench. And yeah, that's that's that. We're going to finish the construction of that between the episodes there. And in the next episode, I will go for dedicated rooms, workshops, and these things. And then we're pretty much already uh, getting closer to the end of this little tutorial series because then there's not much more to tell for me that you really need to know to do your thing because I don't I, I'm not a big fan of uh, telling you how to build your castle or so I just want to give you some tools which you can work with for example these um, higher ground tactics and such they are because they are really really powerful and do make a lot of difference alrighty so I hope that was helpful for you let's hope that next time we're going to get the opportunity to fight back a attack with these defenses because it's a lot of fun once you get there and yeah drop your comments down below if you feel like there are other and easier or better or whatever methods Drop it down in the comments. Also, leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed to make sure that other people get a chance to see this video too. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. There's daily content popping up there. I'd be delighted to have you among my subscribers. Whatever might be the case, have a wonderful day and see you soon. Goodbye.